So how did they plan? As you can see, the Muslim Brotherhood has a military arm and has a peaceful cultural arm. You know, a social arm, kind of, if you want to say. So we know they want to attack us militarily. That's Al-Qaeda, you know, the terrorists, you know, the lone wolf and all of that stuff. But what is even more dangerous than that? is the way they are taking our country and infiltrating our country from within with us being asleep at the switch. Part of the Muslim Brotherhood project, they have educational foundations, they have media organizations, they have publishing organizations, they have decided, they have written in this plan every single way and every single loophole that they want to attack the United States in. And from the education, from the media, do you know that right now they are setting up an entertainment center in Hollywood for $20 million? Is it any wonder why we see now more and more Hollywood becoming politically correct? You're not going to see any more movie, movies like Not Without My Daughter. Remember the movie Not Without My Daughter? You don't see movies like that anymore. That was 20 years ago. Those movies are not produced in Hollywood anymore. And there's a reason why. But what I'm going to focus on right now is how they are infiltrating our education system. Because this is how we are losing our children. They started on college campus, infiltrating the college campus with the, flow, with the flow from Saudi money. Because of the oil wealth, the Saudis started pumping millions into our universities, setting up Middle East study departments and political science departments, and appointing Arab professors who are anti-Israel and anti-America to brainwash our kids to make them believe America is bad, Israel is evil, and uh, you know the, the Islamic world is, is uh, repressed and is oppressed because of America's imperialism. And the way they were doing it is they were using a loophole called Title VI program. Title VI program is a program instituted by our government after World War II in order to teach our children about foreign governments and foreign language so they may be an asset to our country, especially those who want to get into the State Department, the diplomatic field, go work in embassies, the CIA. That's what that program was all about, the Title VI program. So under the Title VI program, that's how the Saudis started funneling billions of dollars setting up these departments and appointing Arab professors who are brainwashing our children. To give you an idea of the Saudi infiltration into our universities, Here's a list of the extent of their infiltration. King Fahad of Saudi Arabia donated $20 million to set up a Middle East study department at the University of Arkansas. Five million donated to, to Berkeley's Middle East study department from two Saudi sheikhs led to Al-Qaeda. Harvard received $22.5 million. Is it any wonder why Harvard invites President Khatibi E to speak at Harvard on September 11th, two years ago? Money buys a lot of influence. 28.1 million went to Georgetown. 11 million to Cornell. 5 million to MIT. 1.5 million to Texas A&M. 1 million to Princeton. Rutgers received 5 million share endowment. Also Columbia did receive that as well, but Columbia tried to lie to conceal the source of the funds. Other recipients of Saudi monies include you see Santa Barbara, John Hopkins University, Rice University, American University, University of Chicago, USC, UCLA, Duke University, Syracuse University, Howard University. You get the idea. From the Ivy Leagues down to the community colleges and everything in between, we pump the gas and they pump poison into the hearts and minds of our future generation. And that's why we must become energy independent. So, the Islamists figured out the strategy worked so well on college campus, they figured, why wait until the kids get to college? Why don't we start with the children in middle school? This way, by the time they get to be 18 years old and go to college and they can vote, we already have them in our pocket. So the Islamic Council on Education, which later changed names like four or five times already, I do not know, I can't remember what their last name is, they started with an Islam course and it's an Islam course to 6th and 7th graders in public schools. The course is three weeks long where Muslim students have to memorize and recite verses from the Quran, adopt Islamic names, uh, go fast for one day to experience Ramadan or the Islamic holy holiday, and go to a mosque on a field trip. And you know, when I started speaking about this as I, as I would travel, People will say, absolutely not. Brigitte, you're exaggerating. I mean, you know, we have separation of church and state. I mean, after all, we can't even sing Christmas carols at school. We don't even have Christmas 
know that they have to break? Yeah, you know, they couldn't possibly be teaching this type of stuff. So I thought, you know what? There is nothing like show and tell. <laughs> so here is the course. This is the Islam course. And um, the Islam course starts with, here's the teacher instructions. The teacher begins the class with, from the beginning, you and your classmates will become Muslims. You will be a member of a caravan. And she continues on with the explanation of the course. And she continues, and you can tell I'm skipping through a lot of stuff, saving you time. I'm boredom. <laughs> Dressing as, mus as a Muslim and trying to be involved will increase your learning and enjoyment. Finally, trying your best at all tasks will guarantee you an excellent grade and a more enjoyable time. So the teacher is already dangling the grade carrot in front of the children. Um, and then here on the next page, they give them the choice of Islamic names. Here is the page you can choose um, Muslim names from. Abdullah, Khalid, Hassan, Hamza, Ibrahim, Arafat, Karima, Maryam, Noor, Amina, etc. They have girls names and boys names. And then, here's a wisdom card. Now, I chose this card. This is like a practice card, you know, like when kids are studying math. And, you know, you have cue cards, so you can memorize your lesson. They have them, you know, in all subjects. So this is called the wisdom card. And what I'm going to share with you today is a card about jihad. Now, the reason why I'm sharing this specific card with you is because we have become familiar with the word jihad because we hear terrorists use it a lot. I mean, after all, they have organizations named Islamic Jihad, Al-Mujahideen. Every time you watch a video of a suicide bomber that he pre-taped before he blew himself up, he talks about why he's dying uh, in the path of jihad, or jihad fi sabilillah, jihad in the path of Allah. So the word jihad is basically one with terrorist activity. So here's what they're teaching our children about jihad. And by the way, jihad is mentioned in the Quran 40 times. 36 times out of 40 as a military struggle, a holy war against the infidels in order to either kill them or subjugate them. Here's what they're teaching our children about jihad. A jihad is a struggle by Muslims against oppression, invasion, and injustice. So, if these words sound familiar to you, it's because these are the talking points of Al-Qaeda. Every time you hear Al-Qaeda issuing press release about why they're fighting the United States, what do they say? We are fighting against American oppression. We are fighting against injustice. We are fighting against uh, invasion. You hear that from Hamas in particular, the Palestinian Authority. Why suicide bombers and Hamas and all those Palestinians, you know, blowing themselves up? We are fighting oppression. We are fighting injustice. We are fighting occupation. So what we are seeing in public schools today is basically the talking points of our enemies being fed to our 6th and 7th graders in the name of diversity and multiculturalism teaching them about religion that are the talking points of our enemy paid for by our tax dollars in our public schools. This is what's happening in our public school system. This is unbelievable what is happening, that we have allowed it to get to this point. Parents were not paying attention because parents asked little Johnny and little Sally when they came home from school, oh honey, did you do your homework? Oh sure mom, I'm finished, I can go play now. That's the extent of it. You have parents working two jobs, not paying attention to what's happening in the public schools. A lot of these courses, this is a state uh, education curriculum. This is a state approved education. And this is why we are so concerned about what's happening in the country. This is why we need to develop the backbone to say what needs to be said and throw political correctness in the garbage. <laughs>